Hello, I'm Bruce Hasselry, and I'm here representing the African American Heritage Society Incorporated of Greater Johnstown. Uh, I'm pleased to uh, be a part of uh, kicking off uh, Black History Month, which will be in a few days. Uh, now I'm going to share some slides with you of the program that we're going to present. Alan Cashaw is assisting me on this project and uh, he's my tech person. Contributions of Greater Johnstown Area's African American Community in Sports. Next. I'd like to uh, read the statement of our mission statement of the African American Heritage Society, Inc. Founding in 2013, the African American Heritage Society Incorporated is an independent Johnstown, Pennsylvania nonprofit organization established to preserve the history of African Americans and to promote awareness of the significant African American contributions rendered in the development of Greater Johnstown. The society acknowledges similarities and differences that include individual and collective values and mores. Next. A little bit of historical perspective. As mentioned, 2013, the organization was uh, established and it was due to the real persistent uh, efforts of Claudia B. Jones, her passion, her dedication to uh, saving and preser preserving and uh, exhibiting history of African-Americans in our area. She's a retired professor biology at the University of Pittsburgh at Johnstown, who also taught in Johnstown schools earlier. But through her energy, uh, we were able to uh, have this organization established. It is housed in the uh, Discovery Center, uh, the, the Jaha Discovery Center, which is on Broad Street in the West End. Probably 35 years ago, a group of um, men, at that time, uh, young men, as I was one of them, men in my office at EPJ, uh, Jim Porcher, Charles Gumby Sr., um, Calvin McRae Sr. We talked about uh, developing some kind of way of, re of recording and history of African-Americans in sport in our area. We thought about it, talked about it, but you know how time passes. Uh, we never got it done. Recent years, probably the last six, seven months, uh, I've been talking with people like Alan Cashaw and Joe Cashaw, uh, Congressman Ricky, Ricky Britt, uh, Councilman rather, Ricky Britt, uh, as well as Ron Coleman and others about developing this process, project. So we, we've decided to um, go forward with it. And what I wanna do now is just give you a little uh, insight to what we hope to do. Next. Again, the contributions uh, African-Americans have made in support in our area. And the goals of the project are to preserve and exhibit the history of former African-American area athletes, whether professional, college, high school, community, sand sandlot, players, coaches, and teams. Next. And we're going to do that from, a, from as early as possible. Uh, to an undetermined date, which depends on the people who are working on this after we're long gone. Past, present, and future. We want to look at the impact um, on the sports community that they had. And many of these individuals are what we call lesser known heroes. At that particular time, they were a hero or important, uh, but, but they are lesser known. Uh, we think that providing this local recognition of what they did in the past will affect the community in a very positive way. And, um, you know, I think of uh, African-American athletes having an effect on young people who want to see people who look like me. I can say myself, I can think of um, people in my community who inspired me to do well in sports who look like me. 
We're going to start with the gold standard of recognizing athletes in our community, in our Cambria County, and that's the Cambria County Sports Hall of Fame, which was established in 1965. It currently has 148 members. There are 22 female members. Uh, there are 16 African Americans, and I am currently the president of that organization. Have been that for about the last 12 years, and the the criteria to get into Cambria County Sports Hall of Fame is that the individuals or teams must have done something that has um, national acclaim. In other words, you could be a local star of everything in your local community, but if it didn't uh, impact uh, nationally. Uh, you won't be considered. So that's why a lot of the individuals uh, have been in college, because if you're in college, the uh, things that you do are impacted nationally. Um, so we're going to look at, uh, and, and if you would like to, the website is shown right in front of you on the screen. Uh, that's a place you can go and look at all 148 members. Obviously, of the members of football have the, is the largest category. I think there are about 45 members who are football players. Um, so we're going to take a look at the 16 African Americans who are in the Cameron County Sports Hall of Fame, uh, the gold standard of recognition. And we're going to start with the most recent class, the most recent class, uh, back through the beginning. Most recent class, we had a dedication program last, um, uh, October of 2021, and that was the class of 2020. There were six inductees and an African-American inductee was Andrew Hawkins. Andrew was known for most recently being a commentator on the NFL network and ESPN. He is a graduate of Bishop McCord Catholic High School. He went to the University of Toledo. Um, he, was a, he was a senior year, something unusual. Uh, the fact that he played a wide receiver and a cornerback his senior year. And that hasn't happened since the days of uh, two-way two -way, uh, football players, probably 40, 50 years ago. Um, Andrew <clears throat> left Toledo and played in the Canadian Football League. And he was able to uh, win two gold cups um, with the Montreal Al Alouettes. Gold Cup in Canada is similar, uh, or the Grey Cup rather, is similar to the uh, Super Bowl with us, with the United States football, similar to Super Bowl. He also um, moved to the NFL. When he went to the NFL, he became a six-year player with the Cincinnati Bengals and the Cleveland Browns uh, as a wide receiver. Very impressive just because, very impressive just because of the fact that uh, he was young and small in stature, but he had a lot of heart, a lot of speed and a lot of moves. And we appreciated watching him on TV. Andrew uh, got a master's degree from Columbia University while he was in uh, professional football. It's quite quite a difficult task. So we're proud of, of uh, him juggling that and making uh, young folks know that if you need to get something, it's, it's hard work, very hard work, and you must deal with that. So you could read all those yourselves, a lot of accolades there, but uh, most importantly, he is in our Camry County Sports Hall of Fame. Next. The Rod Stevens Howling, class of 2018. The Rod's a graduate of Greater Johnstown High School. Uh, he broke many of the career rushing records at Johnstown that had been there for over, over, over 30 years. And Artrell Hawkins Sr. had those records. And Artrell Hawkins seniors had those records for about 30 years. And we'll talk about him a little bit later. Uh, LaRod went to the University of Pittsburgh. Um, he was the starting running back for um, his first two years there. 
he was um, a member of a team that uh, went to a few bowls as well while he was there. Uh, also in high school, he did uh, wrestle and run track, play baseball. He was a Tribune Democrat Offensive Player of the Year. Um, he was drafted from after he graduated from Pitt, in which he played all four years. He graduated and was drafted by the Arizona Cardinals. Um, he was able to establish himself as a kick returner. And uh, one year he read, led the league in a number of yards return on kickoffs. And he had two uh, in 2010. He also had a, one kickoff return of 102 yards against Oakland. I remember watching that. Um, Larod uh, finished his career with Pittsburgh. Um, his, his career was ended with a, a very bad leg injury um, that he sustained in the first game of the year with Pittsburgh. He uh, coached as a volunteer coach and as a coach at Robert Morris and Pitt, and he's now in corporate America. We're proud of Larod. Next. G. Roy Simon, class of 2016. G. Roy was an outstanding track, football, and basketball player at Greater Johnstown. He was um, outstanding, and I recall him going to the state track meet with uh, his running ability. He went to the University of Maryland, where he played uh, football, had a number of records that he established when he left there, as well as records in the Atlantic Coast Conference. When he left uh, Maryland, he went to the Canadian Football League. And that story is just amazing in terms of what his efforts brought. He was an all-time leader in the Canadian Football League in receptions. And he recorded 103 career touchdown catches. He won three Grey Cup championships, with two with the British Columbian Lions and one with Saskatchewan Rough Riders. He was the outstanding player in the league in 206. Uh, he also uh, was an all-star seven times, Canadian Football League all-star. He uh, is currently working uh, as a director of scouting and personnel uh, for British Columbia football, the Lions. And he is, uh, <laughs> unusual stories, the fact that he, at the 100th anniversary of the Canadian Football League's Grey Cup, his likeness was featured on a postage stamp commemorating their 100 years. Now, a young man from Johnstown, Pennsylvania, has a stamp that has his likeness on it. Next. Samantha Polina, class of 2014. Samantha is a graduate of Connemaw Valley High School. Her senior year, she was named the Associate Press Class A Girls High School Player of the Year. The High School Player of the Year. She was on a um, state championship runner-up basketball team her senior year. She went to Duquesne University, and she's ranked in the top 10 in women's basketball and career scoring at Duquesne. Two-time second team selection Atlantic 10, all-conference team, and most notable, she's very proud of the fact that she made the Atlantic 10 all-conference academic team twice. Next. Leah Hollis, who I now call Dr. Leah Hollis. She's a class of 2014, Cameron County Sports Hall of Fame. She played two years, well, not two years, but played, she played on two Richland High School girls volleyball state championship squads that were coached by Linda Renzi, who was a member of our Cameron County Sports Hall of Fame. She earned an NCAA Division I scholarship to Rutgers University 
uh, where she started all 106 of her team's games during her freshman year. She's recognized as a scholar athlete by the Collegian Magazine and was featured in Black Collegian Magazine. She graduated and went on to work in uh, various academic and, uh, and support roles uh, at the University of Pittsburgh doing graduate work. She went to Northeastern University in Boston and uh, was an assistant director of student support. She worked on the NCAA peer review. Um, and she uh, has attained her, attained her PhD and has been teaching and writing. Um, she's a professor at Morgan State University and she's uh, written uh, four books uh, on and her study on um, bullying in higher education. Next. And that's me, Bruce Hausrig, and I won't spend much time. The fact that uh, <laughs> I'm in the class of 2012, uh, been officiating probably about 40 some years, and uh, my unique claim to fame is being the, after teaching and coaching in Johnstown, uh, going to UPJ and being an administrator, and also starting the, the uh, wrestling program. Um, and having the school's first All-American in any sport, that was in 1975, Steve Ragland in wrestling. And um, having the ability to officiate uh, 19 high school state championships and six NCAA Division II championships and doing a lot of regional uh, and conference championships like the Atlantic Coast Conference. Um, I've worked in the Big Ten as well. And, um, uh, I think the most successful thing about my career is that I mentor referees, wrestling referees, uh, which is needed in all sports. And I'm sort of president of uh, several uh, wrestling uh, conferences. Next. Our Trail Hawkins Jr. Yes, he's the brother of Andrew Hawkins class of 2010. Artrell was a prolific running back and a defensive back at Bishop McCord Catholic High School. Uh, as a senior, he rushed for almost 1,500 yards. He was, not was, but he was a defensive back at Cincinnati, University of Cincinnati. He played in 41 games. He started the last two years. He was a real hitter, a real hitter. His senior year, uh, the Bearcats went to their first uh, bowl appearance since 1950. He was drafted by the Cincinnati Bengals in the second round, 43rd third person all overall in 1998 draft. Played a decade nearly in, uh, in the NFL with the Cincinnati Bengals, Carolina Panthers, and New England Patriots. Um, he was a uh, a person that was uh, really depending upon by those programs. He eventually had his own radio syndicated, nationally syndicated radio program in sports and continues to work in a little bit in that area now. Next. Moses Gray, the class of 20, 2006, 2006 to say. He's, he's a graduate of East Connemaw. And he had a scholarship to Indiana University, Bloomington, Indiana, Big Ten. He was a Hoosier. And he made all Big Ten. He was drafted uh, when we had an NFL and an AFL, two conferences competed for him. He was drafted by the New York Giants and also the New York Titans. He signed and played with the New York Titans uh, for two years. Uh, before moving to another team in the American Football League. Uh, the Sports Illustrated at one time mentioned that he was the best offensive lineman, best offensive tackle in the American Football League. Moses Gray. Next. Lisa Britt. Lisa Britt. 
what can I say about air in terms of basketball in general? It was not even saying women's basketball, but he set women's basketball um, up at UPJ from then to now. Her impact on the program at UPJ, uh, just awesome. She was a captain of the Johnstown women's basketball team her junior and senior year. Uh, you'd see her on the playground playing with the guys, and she was very good, very good. She went to UPJ and started them on a trend that uh, still is happening up there. She was became UPJ's first basketball American uh, in 1980. Uh, while she was at UPJ, she had uh, 11 records. Uh, she also uh, was at UPJ when they became the number one ranked team in the nation by the Eastern Association of Intercollegiate Athletics for Women. She was, after she graduated, she had tried for the U.S. Olympic team. She was also drafted uh, uh, in the, the Women's Professional Basketball League by the Minnesota Phillies. Uh, she's had a career in corporate America, living in um, Florida. She was inducted to the Pitt Johnstown Athletics Hall of Fame uh, as well. Next. Cal Fowler, a name you probably don't recognize, but he was from the class of 2002. Cal played basketball at St. Francis University. Again, remember St. Francis is part of Camry County. Um, he was a, a, a real leader at St. Francis in terms of uh, averages uh, over his era, as well as um, uh, uh, the fact that he played on AAU teams where they won two AAU championships. No, and, 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 and he was an AAU All-American. That's the Athletic, uh, American Athletic Union, which is an organization that guys play in after they get out of college if they don't turn to pro. He also was a member of the 1968 Olympic gold medal basketball team. Think about that. He's a member of the gold medal basketball team, 1968 Olympics that was held in Mexico City. And that was at a time when the professionals did not play. But most of the players were from AAU teams and from colleges. Um, he had a very good career in that area. But uh, St. Francis, uh, again, he helped them um, uh, nationally in terms of the kind of program they had over a good period of time. Next. Um, Carlton Hasford, I don't even have his name on this slide because he's pretty recognizable by most people. But what's unique about Carlton is that, well, also as unique is the fact that he has been inducted to the Camry County Sports Hall of Fame twice, class of 1990 as a wrestler and class of 2014 as a football player. Next. He had so much on his accomplishments that I just decided to do a separate slide. In terms of wrestling, what's unique about him is the fact that he won a state championship without a team. Johnstown did not have a team at that time. Uh, high school and he was team by himself where he worked out with area uh, high schools and area uh, wrestlers. He was a heavyweight wrestler and as a senior, he won the state championship. Uh, it's a record of 10 and 0. Went to the UPJ and um, helped put that program on the mat. Um, the fact that he won three Division T two championships as a heavyweight and then moved up to the Division One and won three of those. That was the way you did it back in the day. Division two and three champions were allowed to move up to the Division One championship, uh, which was always a week later. Um, that cannot be done anymore because they have a rule that the coaches division one voted on uh, to stop that from happening. So that doesn't happen anymore. And in the, in the wrestling world, they call it the hassle rule. Um, he did have tryouts for the Olympics. Uh, he made it to the third, third place on the ladder. Um, 
He used the fact that he was a wrestler uh, and a big one um, to get noticed by several professional football teams his senior year. He was drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers in their last round. Uh, back then, they had 12 rounds. He was drafted there. He stayed on their taxi team squad for one year and then moved up into the uh, squad, the actual team. And he was able to, in a four year period, to become a uh, best lineman uh, in the league. He made a Pro Bowl as a right guard. Um, and he also spent a year with the, with the New York Jets. After leaving football, he played some um, other, in some other programs, some other teams, American, uh, I can't remember the name, but he did play with a couple other leagues. Um, he also played a lot of Sandlot around here with the guys. Um, he did MMA. Uh, he's been inducted to numerous halls of fame, the Pitt Johnston Hall of Fame, the Division II Wrestling Hall of Fame, and uh, the biggest one in wrestling, which would be the um, National Wrestling Hall of Fame uh, in Stillwater, Oklahoma. He was a member of the 19, um, 2005 75th anniversary wrestling team. Uh, at one point, he had 122 consecutive matches without a loss. Next. Kevin Porter was the St. Francis University basketball player. He was inducted in 1984. He was uh, a guard that was very aggressive and very good. He was drafted by the Baltimore Bullets in 1972. And this is the NBA uh, when they didn't have as many teams as they have now. So it had to be tough to stay there. And he did stay there for 10 seasons, 10 seasons. He was the uh, first player in NBA history to have a thousand assists in a season, thousand assists. He once held the record for single game uh, assists at, at 29. Can you imagine that? Um, so he had a good career playing with the Baltimore Bull Bullets and, uh, and I forget a few other teams. He uh, also came back to St. Francis in 1983 through 87. He was the coach of the St. Francis. Next. Norm Van Leer, class of 1981. Norm was also from St. Francis University. Um, he, unique story about him is he was a member of the 19, 65 million high school leopards. They were considered one of the most uh, best high schools in the, in, the, in the state for a long period of time. They won the state championship and some other members of that high school team went on to college and pros. He um, had a great career at St. Francis. Um, his, his jersey was retired at St. Francis. In, in 2010, he was drafted by the, uh, the Cincinnati Bengal Royals, and then he also played for the Chicago Bulls for a number of years. He was in the all defensive team, NBA, a number of years. His nickname was Stormin' Norman Van Leer, and that's what uh, the announcers called him, Stormin' Norm, a very tough defensive player. Next. Jeff Richardson, Jeff's well known in our community because Jeff was a high school state champion his junior year. He was also a runner up his senior year. Jeff was a great football player and ran track. He ran the 100 yard dash and the 200 in the track besides doing the shot put. Jeff had a had a scholarship to Michigan State University where he did two sports, wrestling and football, which is unheard of, especially this day and age with so much time you've got to put into each sport. And um, 
he was a part of the uh, game uh, called the game of the century between Notre Dame and Michigan State, where they were both undefeated and they tied. Um, he played defensive tackle, and he was Notre Dame named him to their all defensive team or all, all opponent of defensive team that year. Jeff was a part of a state a national championship football team, and he was a part of a national championship wrestling team. Michigan State won national tournament in his senior year. Uh, he was able to get, uh, participate in um, football to the degree that he was drafted by the New York Jets. He uh, claimed, big claim to fame that most of you will remember is that he won, he was with the Jets when they won the Super Bowl, Super Bowl number three, when Joe Namath guaranteed that David win. So when Jeff's in town, a lot of people like to see that ring. And he's a, always carried himself as a great human being. He was inducted to the Pennsylvania Wrestling Coaches Association Hall of Fame um, and some others as well. He had a career in, in um, security with a chain, with the supermarket chain in uh, New York and New Jersey and retired as a vice president. Next. Lawrence Walton, we used to call Larry Walton, 1973 induction to the Camry County Sports Hall of Fame. He was a great football player, basketball player, and track, play, track athlete at Johnstown. And those of you who were there with him uh, participated with him. Uh, it's a great individual. He went to um, Trinidad. It was a community college in, in Colorado. Um, played there and he was uh, then transferred to Arizona State University. The coach at Arizona State was Frank Cush, who was originally from Wimber, was known for his uh, coaching techniques. And uh, uh, Lawrence went there and was very successful there nationally. Got drafted by the Detroit Lions as a wide receiver. Uh, at Johnstown, he played quarterback, running back and wide receiver those teams back then. Uh, he played wide receiver in college and, and in the pros. And he uh, spent uh, most of his career with the Lions and did finish up with the Buffalo Bills. Uh, he was uh, um, in um, Arizona. He stayed there and uh, has been working in corporate America then, a corporate America in, in Arizona. Next. Maroon Stokes was in the initial class in 1965 with the Camden County Sports Hall of Fame. He uh, has a unique story. He's from Pittsburgh originally. I can't remember. You think he was at either Westinghouse or Fifth Avenue High School. Recruited, came to St. Francis and set all kinds of records. He was an All-American. And back then, the NIT was just a national invitation tournament in New York was just as strong uh, as the NCAA tournament. Teams would opt to which one they would go to. Uh, and as a result of being in New York, it's that visibility. He got drafted uh, by the NBA team, Rochester, Cincinnati, it's called, it was, which became Cincinnati. <clears throat> he was the uh, NBA Rookie of the Year. Think about that, NBA Rookie of the Year. Um, and, he, and he was an all-star. Um, I think three times and something in, that happened that sort of sets his story off is that his last game of the season, he fell and hit his head, fell to the floor and hit his head. Uh, he was knocked unconscious. He was unconscious for three days. He was 24 years old and he went into an coma, which paralyzed him permanently, paralyzed him permanently, 24 years old. He became a national known inspiration to others as he coped with his illness, leading to a motion picture that was made about his story. At St. Francis, the Stokes Center is named after in his honor. And he was inducted to the National Basketball Hall of Fame, the Naismith 
Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame, which is the highest accolade that you can get. Marie Stokes. And it'd be a great one for you to look up. Next. Another Hall of Fame that we do have in, in our area is the Triple ABA Hall of Fame. In 2016, Ricky Britt was inducted into that Hall of Fame, becoming the first African American to be um, from our area to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Next, I have a couple little. Yeah, he was a center fielder. The years he played the Triple ABA were 1962 to 1965. The team was Johnstown Hans Platt Packing, and he played with them for uh, in the junior league. I remember playing against him. Um, he played several years for the Pittsburgh Pirates Far Florida Farm Club system in the Gastonia League and the Bactavia League. Um, and he also played with the, uh, I think the Philadelphia Bale of the World Football League. Um, I think you could put that slide up there, Alan. Okay, next. Maurice Moberry was inducted to the Triple ABA Hall of Fame in 2018. And Maurice's local product, who um, played a lot of baseball in the Sandlots and in the rookie leagues and the junior league, he played for Johnstown Pepsi Cola. And he was in the Triple ABA from 1990 to 1993, the right handed pitcher. Small in stature, but he could throw, throw that peel. Okay, we're glad to still have Maurice in our community. Next. Take a look at a few old older uh, pictures. We went back and looked at a few things here. Uh, this is unique in that it's the Triple ABA 1947 Johnstown represented. And the coach for our left is Raymond Hempill. And next to him is Pete Roebuck. Um, Pete Roebuck uh, is uh, someone who's always played in the senior leagues, et cetera, at Johnstown. Um, something else I'd like to point out in the front row, the second person in is Ken Kuiper, who used to be the coach at U of Han Packing, as well as the coach, longtime coach of the University of Pittsburgh at Johnstown baseball team. And Pete Roebuck was his third base coach for a number of years, how far they go back. Next. A few wrestlers. John Skip McCray was Johnstown's first state champion, Johnstown High School's first state champion. He um, had a great career by going to college at Michigan State University. He uh, was a Michigan State or a Big Ten uh, uh, place winner as well as an All-American wrestler. He graduated and had a, a very successful career working in social work in New Jersey with his raising his family. A more recent wrestler was a real pace setter is Mariah Harris from Johnstown High. Picture you see there is a picture of her at Mary, Maryville um, University in Tennessee or Campbellsville, I'm sorry, it's Campbellsville University in Tennessee. Um, she went there to wrestle after high school and she became the women's national champion uh, last year, I believe, um, after a couple of years of being runner up. This is freestyle wrestling. She's been to the Olympic Training Center and her goal is to uh, be an Olympian. Um, and she is now presently um, and working as a, an assistant coach and being in grad school. Mariah Harris's brother, Will, is the Johnstown High's uh, wrestling coach and one of the assistants in football. Next. Thought this was unique in that Art Dorian was the first black professional hockey player in the United States. He was signed by the New York Rangers 
but he played in their hockey in their minor leagues and never made the pros. But he was the first one who was signed. But what's unique is that he was the first African American professional hockey player in Johnstown because he, because he played for the Johnstown Jets two seasons. And there was a nice article written by Mike Mastovich of the Tribune Democrat uh, when he did die in terms of what he had done since he left the Jets. Unique story about our community. Next. Tell you a little bit about J.B. Brown, the golfer. J.B. Brown won, I believe, six city champions, golfing city championships. Um, and he had a lot of other guys uh, I know from Prospect, his age, who used to golf with him. And uh, to this day, there are groups of guys who go together and golf at the area, golf courses. But he's unique, and we have a, a, a clip from a, a Throwback Thursday 2019 that was done in the, the WJAC TV. Luckily, one man okay. put together six city championships in a span from 1954 to 1968, and he had a unique way of going about it. When J.B. Brown grabbed a golf club, his grip was different. Different than any other, Brown golfed cross-handed, but his former Sonny Hanna and Berkeley Hills professional Joe Shorto told us he was one of the few African-Americans at the time who could post scores low enough to compete for the city title, and he won it six times in 1954, 59, 60, 63, 65, and his final title in 1968. According to Shorto, Brown was from Prospect, worked at Bethlehem Steel, and of course, Spent a lot of time at Berkeley Hill. Shorto added that Brown could easily have won a seventh title, but according to local golfing lore, Brown blew an eight-stroke lead on the 18th hole and eventually lost in a playoff to four-time winner Bob Woodpractiger. Luckily, one man puts... Thank you, J.B. Brown. Just think about that. How long ago that was and what he was doing. He's a real pace setter. A few pictures here that was given to me by Charles Jeffers, uh, one of Joseph Johns Jr. High on the right. And Charles, I believe, is number 24, second from the right in the first, place, uh, first row sitting. He's right beside Charles Gumby. And there are a number of other folks in here that I don't want to miss, miss the names. I know in the front row sitting as a manager is Burrow Hasselry III. Uh, who was also a football player at Johnstown. Uh, we're going to do something later on this coach that we're, the, the, that's in this row. His name is Bob Sakula, who was the um, football, basketball, track coach for a number of years here. And he, uh, he was a great coach, a great individual who motivated a lot of us to do more than athletics. And uh, we hope to do something on the Joseph Johns Junior High reign. Um, football and basketball over a period of time. Um, the other pictures, Greater Johnson High School, um, I think this is Charles Jefferson's sophomore year. He's number 21. Uh, and this is brother James, number 31. And I think we have Larry Walton, number 33. How about 33? Yeah, and uh, it's Mr. That's Tony Gumby right there. Tony Gumby. And I think, is it number 25? Is that Ricky Britt? I'm not sure. Okay, it could be. <laughs> but there a lot of people were sending us pictures, uh, trying to identify. Uh, we hope to, again, keep moving along with this. Next. This young man, Hawk. Artrell Hawkins Sr. Our Trail Hawkins Sr. I had an opportunity to coach him when he was in junior high. Great football player, wrestler, uh, quit a run track if he wanted to. He, he um, as Johnston High, was a running back that held the career wrestling yards and scoring points for over 30 years. And those records were broken by LaRod Stevens Holland. After Johnstown, he went to junior college and was an All-American running back at Coffeyville 
uh, junior college in Kansas. He was heavily recruited out of there as a running back uh, by Ohio State, Pitt, Penn State. Those of you who know who Woody Hayes is, uh, he, he, he was putting the rush on him, had him in his offices, and Archel finally decided to go to Pitt. He was a uh, running back there and played in three seasons. Two of those seasons, they won the Gator Bowl, and another year, they won the Fiesta Bowl. Um, he had a, a free agent tryout with the Steelers. Um, they wanted to make him a wide receiver, uh, which was tough to do. At that time, they had receivers like John Stallworth, Lynn Swan. Um, he stayed in our community and was a dominant running back in our flag leagues, also our basketball leagues. Um, uh, just a great athlete. And we like to indicate and from coming from Andrew Hawkins, our trail Hawkins, uh, Aeneas Hawkins, his grandson, um, cousins, the Simon um, family's cousins, uh, that he is a patriarch of the Hawkins family football tree. We like to give him that recognition and, and uh, see what happens in the future. Next. Highlight the fact that the Johnstown um, basketball team played in the Triple or not the trip, but the World War Arena, probably more than any other team. Uh, they brought that event brought in teams from across the state, across the nation, and, and many of the players uh, you would see big college programs later, and even in the pros. And um, just on this team, uh, noted folks that I could recognize from the front were John King on the far right, front row. Uh, Bruce Walton uh, moves over a little bit. Bruce is, uh, was rated pretty high as a basketball player back then. And he was also a football player while at the point of the University of Cincinnati. Um, and next to Bruce is a friend of mine who's on the Cameron County Sports Hall of Fame committee right now. And that's Paul Litwell, number 22, who is the, uh, who uh, became the coach at Johnston High uh, years after he graduated. Back in the back row, my buddy Jerry Holloman on the far right, back row, the prospect guy, and Clifford Pelmore is over there in the middle. Clifford was another jumping guard. He would jump and slam. Next on, on that same page, point out John King was the first black to get the Point Stadium Award. He was a, a high school junior um, and he was the um, quarterback at that time. He played quarterback, wide receiver, running back, whatever had to happen and <clears throat> That year, the quarterback was uh, hurt, and he became he was the quarterback, the, the other quarterback that he split time with, and he uh, against Altoona threw threw two touchdowns to to make have a big win. That's Point Stadium Award was for any activity in the Point Stadium. That's twelve months a year, so you had imagine how much baseball went on, including the Triple ABA tournament, as well as many high school teams played their games at the Point Stadium. Obviously, Bishop McCourt did, so did Connemaw, Franklin, even Richmond sometimes. So the games would start, Ferndale, start Thursday night, Friday night, and then Saturday two games, depending upon what school had it with. But John King, um, great athlete, uh, went on to West Texas State for a year or so before he went into the service. Next. Um, just to show, again, other areas that uh, our folks participated in on the right is cross country. It's a picture of in the front row, Emory Whitlow, and behind him, George Joy. Um, this was a state cross country team, the cross country team that was going to the state meet. Um, they both were very good in track, running a distance, half mile, mile. George was a great quarter miler. Um, 
each of them um, participated well to the Johnstown scene in, in terms of track and field, cross country. The other, Ted Wheeler, uh, I bring him into this because he's a cousin of mine who stayed in Johnson about three years. Um, his parents from Philadelphia. He, he came to Johnstown and his two older brothers to stay with their grand, grandmother, who was my grandmother also. Uh, he participated in track in Johnstown and then moved to uh, Chicago area to live with his dad and became a very successful track and cross country runner there. Got a scholarship to University of Iowa and um, became a Big Ten champ in the half mile, ran, became an NCAA All-American in both sports. He graduated and ran uh, in a number of uh, clubs, track clubs, and was able to qualify for the 1956 Olympics in the half mile. Uh, he didn't win it or place, but uh, he continued to uh, run after that. He became uh, an assistant coach at the University of Iowa, and eventually uh, the head track and cross country coach for a number of years before retiring. He's in their Hall of Fame and the Big Ten Hall of Fame as well. Next. Again, to remind you, we want to preserve and exhibit the history of former African-American area athletes, whether professional, collegiate, high school, community, Sandlot, players, coaches, and teams. Next. And we want to encourage you, if you've got any information, any tidbits, any thoughts, ideas, uh, articles, pictures, uh, get to us. On this screen, we have the address. I also have my phone number at the bottom. also have my email at the bottom. Um, so you can get to us or if you are in the community, uh, your current uh, Penn Highlands community, you want to get to Dr. Zaborowski, that will work as well. Okay, I want to thank you for being patient and uh, please help us on our way. Thank you.